These are the 1992 Olympic box offs and in previous Olympic years you can see box off survivors who have gone on to find boxing careers out. Those are men that lost in the trials but went on to win twice at the box offs went on to not only medals in the Olympics although not Kelsey Banks but also good pro careers and that guy has done OK for himself hasn't he. Not bad at all. You can't see the cut over his right eye from the elbow uh, of Larry Holmes but he looks none the worse for the wear and we now have welterweights 147 pounders the weight class winner of the Olympic boxing trials Pepe Riley 20 years old out of Glendale California and the challenger for Pepe Riley Jesse Brasino 22 years old out of San Antonio Texas he now lives in Kalamazoo Michigan and the interesting Brasino does not want to turn pro after the Olympics one of the few boxers here who does not want to turn pro tail of the tape very similar the senior two years older but the same height reach should be no difference and as so often is the case we have a lefty against the righty Brasino a southpaw and that southpaw style gave Pepe Riley some trouble in their in their bout in the trial which uh, Riley won 34 to 27. These two have met twice in 92 and Pepe Riley has won both of them interesting that 1988. Now listen to me closely. 1988, Pepe Riley. Later? No, no, but th <laughs> this is worth considering. Okay. In 1988, Pepe Riley lost in the Western Olympic boxing trials to Michael Carbajal. That, that's not unusual, but he did it at 106 pounds. He's now at 147, and in fact, in 1989, he was 147. They checked him, found steroids in his system. He was suspended for the 1991 season. He's now back in boxing, so he doesn't have a lot of real recent experience. But Pepe Riley is a young man that uh, I think there are high hopes for. There are good right hand by Riley, and uh, his dad works with him. Fred Riley is his name, um, a stepfather, and then adopted Pepe as his son, and he is his coach, mentor, sometimes tormentor. He is a very intense individual and always on the amateur boxing scene. Most dads who have amateur boxers are pretty intense. Pepe Riley is known as a slow starter, and Brasino, Brasino got a good jump on him the last time out of the box, but Brasino was interesting. He told uh, uh, us that he said he thinks he's a slow starter, too, so uh, he was surprised he got off so quickly. Riley, though, as I say that, is ahead in this bout. So of the two slow starters, Riley has gotten off the quicker of the two slow starters. Brasino coaches Curtis Isaac. He's a sandwich maker when he's not boxing. Says his uh, deceased father Martin is his inspiration. There is a caution to Riley for slapping and not hitting. His uh, father Martin passed away in 1990. He's his inspiration. And Brasino has been fighting since he was seven years old. That's now 15 years of fighting at 22 for Jesse Brasino. You know, Pepe Riley has one of the best left hooks to the body and the head among anyone boxing here in the United States. There's a caution for low blows to Brasino. He does not put himself in a position against Brasino to throw that punch well. There it is to the body. See, he needs to take a step to his left and where he can throw that left hook, get his left foot outside the right foot of Brasino and get leverage in that left hook. And Pepe didn't do that as well in the first bout. That's why it was so close. In talking with uh, Pepe Riley, though, it's interesting that the comment he made to us, he, he said it's very hard to ever look good fighting Jesse Brasino. He just did, because he's left-handed one, because he's kind of awkward too, very difficult to good look, to look good. Yeah, and yet, I honestly, I think that if, if Pepe would take use, use his best attributes, he could look better. He should be taking a step to his left and banging left hooks. Come. In the round one for these welterweights. They both weigh 147 pounds. Pepe Riley is 20 years old in blue. Jesse Brasino, 22 years old. Well, already with a commanding first round lead. You know, the right hand of Riley has been a little better than, than we'd seen it before. But again, right toward the end of the round, he took a step to his left and landed a double left hook to the body and the head against Brasino. There's the hook. There it is. But he, he's, he's landing it, Bob, despite the fact that he's not in the best position to throw it. And he's a surprise, isn't he? A lot of, he yes. won his way here to the uh, trials by winning the Golden Gloves Championship, much as Roy Jones did when he, he got on the Olympic team four years ago. 
and kind of took a lot of people by surprise. Yeah, trials because he was suspended in 1991. Noted. Oh, it looks like Rosinha was hurt. Knees buckled slightly. The referee is Elmo Adolph of Destrin, Louisiana. And of course, anytime there is any question by the referee as to whether a fighter is hurt or not, there will be a standing eight count. They protect fighters in amateur boxing as best they possibly can. Pepe Riley is landing the right hand a lot, but because of it, he is not throwing the left hook as much as he might, and he's still throwing it from the wrong position. He is on the inside of that right foot of Brasino. That's why his hook isn't landing as well. It's a simple edict that there it is, and he was in position to throw that hook. That really rocked the head of Jesse Brasino. You can get lulled into a false sense of security when you land right, right hands against the left-handed boxer. You still need to get outside that foot because it will help you land both punches. Rosinho now, as you can see, mouth open and looks fatigued. These boxers have been down here all week in Phoenix, and the Valley of the Sun has been exactly that this week. Temperatures hovering around 105 to 113 degrees. These guys have been working out, and it's dry heat, they tell you, so it doesn't affect you. Yeah, right. Beasley Reese made the good point earlier that obviously it's going to be very warm and inside the arena in, ba in Babylonia in Barcelona it will be warm with no air conditioning. These boxers need to be prepared for that kind of heat. Absolutely. From here of course the Olympic team goes to Fort Bragg, North Carolina to train as a group. And the uh, Olympic venue in Badalona, which is a suburb of Barcelona is the Jovan Sports Pavilion. It's called the Badalona Sports Palace. And if Pepe Riley keeps throwing left hooks like he's doing now, he will have a good chance in Barcelona to win a medal, which will surprise a lot of people. There's the overhand right. One good thing about this, Bob, for him to develop that punch better, as he is doing, along with the left hook, is excellent. But look at Jesse Brasenia, not giving up at all here. Elmo Adolf has them separate. This is the end of round two. And to this point, Pepe Riley, a commanding lead, I'd say. Stop! After it, you've got to give him a lot of respect for that. He knows that he's behind, and he knows that he's got to make it happen in this third round. And what he's trying to do is throw a lot of straight, good combinations. But there's Riley with the left hook again, uh, such a key weapon for him. You know, Pepe Riley has had virtually no international experience. He's never fought anyone in the top 10 in the world, not ranked in the top 10. He, if he goes to Barcelona, this may be an advantage to him. He will go as a complete surprise to the international community. And as you say, he has some good skills, even though he's been out of the game for a year. And I caution the Brasino there for holding by referee Elmo Adolf. And sometimes uh, not knowing your opponent can help. Yeah, and you know what? They're, they're not going to know when they start getting hit with those left hooks to the body and the head. And, and I'll tell you, his only problem, in my opinion, comes against southpaws with that punch. Against right-handers, that punch is hellacious. Yeah. I mean, he lands it a lot. In red, Pepe Riley started fighting just for self-defense. Jesse Brasino making an attempt to come back, but once again, a caution using the ropes to Riley by Elmo Adolph, the referee from Destin, Louisiana. Brasino, Brasino, a mild comeback here. Well, you know, two things about this bout are remarkable. One, that Brasino, a young man from Michigan who will not give up, is in against a very good boxer in Pepe Riley. And also the fact that Pepe Riley now coming back after the, the um, uh, being laid off because of the steroids, being suspended, has shown that he has the will to get to Barcelona. And, and he's had to box a guy in Brasenio twice now who is not easy to box. Mm -hmm. See those body shots thrown by Pepe Riley, and they do count on the electronic scoring system. The majority rule scoring, five judges at ringside, three must agree. Push a button within one second. Jesse Brasenio is not going to make it easy for Pepe Riley at the end of this fight. And how about that last time? It was 34-27 for Riley. And look at the score is similar now. It shows you these two men are pretty equally matched. Brasenio has done well in this last round. And Pepe Riley now looks to be a little fatigued. At the end of the second round, I thought Brasenio showed a little fatigue, but he's come back. Again, Brasenio and Blue must beat Pepe Riley twice for Riley to make the 
1992 U.S. Olympic boxing team. He must survive the final 10 seconds of this third round, and he makes the boxing team. And if this match were 40 seconds longer, who do you think would be the winner? Rupert Senior is really coming on. Very likely. Wow. 9.34. He really had a major comeback to did. Jesse Brasino, but the points favor Pepe Riley. And Jesse may feel he has won this bout, just as Ivan Robinson felt he yes. won it. We know different. It was an excellent performance by him in that last run. He was very distressed that he didn't get the decision last time against Riley. Score of 39 to 35. 39, 35. Out of the red corner. pleasure of the crowd here in Phoenix. They're going on the old subjective system of scoring, and it doesn't match electronic scoring system. Our last fight of the day features Oscar De La Hoya, but first we'll join Bob Costas in the Prudential Update.